ladies, gentlemen, we got some talking to do. We're going to be talking about Chapter 11. Uh, there's a young man. His name is Tex Mason. Just did a video, and I started it out by talking about this, but I didn't get into it because we talked about some domes. But, ladies and gentlemen, Tex Mason said, take a look at this. And I took a look at it, and it was information that y'all need to know. And I could only figure it was Tex Mason looking out for y'all. Because Tex Mason doesn't normally send stuff like this unless it's a subject matter. And he and I just talked about it because I told him I told you all about it. And Tex Mason did some research for you. So give Tex Mason at thctrust.org some credit. At least I believe it is thctrust.org. But just type in THC, T is in Tom, H is in Henry, trust, T-R-U-S-D. And because I told you, out of all the people I've met, out of all the people I've known, Mr. Tex Mason is the one who I know who does impeccable research. If I can give anybody credit, I'll give him credit. We don't agree on everything. As a matter of fact, just this week, we had a disagreement. <laughs> it, was a, it was a misunderstanding disagreement. But like I said, we don't agree on everything. But I give Mr. Tex Mason his credit because I've known Mr. Tex Mason since 2011. And let's just say, when we talk, we talk. And it's an in-depth talk. Sometimes I have to tell him, hey, hold on, I, I got too much going on. I can't talk right now. We're going to have to talk about that at another time. And when we do, it's an in-depth conversation. So Tex Mason said, hey, take a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at what Tex Mason wants y'all to know about Chapter 11. Oh, look at that. Justia, Justia. How Chapter 11 works? Bankruptcy law basics. And it tells you how it works. Did you know that the courts can charge you $1,000 to file? $1,000 to file? Plus a $39 administration fee? Because Congress says they can charge you for that? Now, guess what you get to do? Now, you're going to have to read this because these are all, well, not all of them, but the basic things that you need to do that you have to comply with the file chapter 11 as a sole proprietorship. You see, that's your catch 22. You're going to go to the bankruptcy court website for your state. Okay, Th just that simple. Now, hold on now. Need y'all to understand something. When you go to the bankruptcy court website, you're going to go to forms. Okay, what you're not going to see is a fee waiver. So you're going to go to the district court for that very same district, and you're going to download its fee waiver, and you're going to file that fee waiver into the bankruptcy case. Yay! Oh, and by the way, do not forget, before you file bankruptcy, you got to go through the bankruptcy credit counseling course. It's about $69 for that, but you have to go through that, and I don't believe there is a, see, credit counseling. I don't believe that there is a, uh, what you call it, a fee waiver for that. But however, pay attention, when you go through this course, it has to be done before you file the bankruptcy. You cannot file the bankruptcy and then, oh, I got to do the credit counseling course because your case will get dismissed because of the way Congress wrote the law. They did that to interfere with you all's access to the court. Yeah, that's Congress for you because Congress loves you. You know, like the Who Love You Baby, Teddy, Vol Teddy Vallis? You remember Teddy Savalas, Who Loves You Baby? Well, Congress doesn't love you because they gave you all kind of hoops and obstacles. You, you just saw what I just said. Not only did they give you $1,000, now most corporations can afford $1,000, but you can't. You're a sole proprietorship. Okay? <laughs> you are a sole proprietorship. How in the world... Can they charge you $1,000 when you're not making as much as a corporation when everybody else who files bankruptcy is only paying $300? So why is a sole proprietorship paying $1,000? Are you telling me that there's some special benefit? No, 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 no. I don't think so, homie. So that's just to let you know what's going on. Now, that's only part of it, ladies and gentlemen. So let's talk about some other things that go on in Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Again, you're going to have to go over this because it is absolutely necessary. Now, we're going to go to Noai. We're going to talk to Poe. Poe, the web search section of Poe. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. 
I am doing a tutorial video and I'm talking to my audience about Chapter 11 Bankruptcy. Comma, I will be doing videos like this in the future where I, where the individual only needs to watch the screen and read the information to know what I am discussing with the AI models. Period. Can you help me with some Chapter 11 issues regarding sole proprietorships? Comma, after they have taken the credit course? Question mark. Counseling? Stop listening? Da, 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 da. Here, certainly here is the information regarding Chapter 11 Bankruptcy for Sole Proprietorships after completing the credit counseling course. Background, Chapter 11 Bankruptcy is often offered for reorganization, and that's all you're doing is reorganizing your affairs. The debtor, in this case, remains in possession of their assets and continues to operate the business with the court's approval. A plan for reorganization is proposed, and the creditors affect it by the plan, have an opportunity to vote on your plan. Now, here's the unique thing. That means they're going to put you through some hoops. Okay? That means you're, they're going to put you through some hoops. Now, watch what we're going to give you this. So you're going to be able to go back and read it. Hold on. Watch what I do now. The process of proposing a plan for reorganization. We're going to click on that one for y'all, okay? So y'all go ahead and read that because we ain't going to read that right now. We have some other things that we're going to do. Okay? Now, watch what we do. They're going to give you four months to come up with a plan okay y'all and y'all gonna have to keep coming up with plans okay because they're gonna they're gonna deny your first plan they're gonna deny your second plan they're gonna keep denying your plan what happens the plan for reorganization is not accepted by the creditors they're gonna keep denying your plans ladies and gentlemen you just need to understand that you notice how poll uh oh uh oh they said refresh that poll and perplexity when i use the web search it's pretty much operating the same way Ain't that interesting, huh? Because they're based on the same algorithm. I just prefer Poe and then challenging it with perplexity because the programming of it is slightly different. Certain information they definitely won't give you on Poe, but they'll give you on perplexity. Hold on, it's searching. Uh, let's see. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you file Chapter 11 bankruptcy, they're going to give you a lot of hoops. You're going to have to jump through a lot of hoops, so just understand that. They don't want you filing Chapter 11 bankruptcy. That's why Congress imposed a $1,000 filing fee. Now, why is it $1,000? Well, corporations are often more complicated than blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're going to let it go on because it's listening to me right now and it's trying to dismiss the case. The plan is not accepted and there is no feasible alternatives. The bankruptcy court may dismiss the chapter 11 it would result in the debtor losing protection and the benefits of bankruptcy and the creditors no 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 liquidation no liquidation ah uh, can the creditors take legal action against the debtor if the plan is accepted is not accepted what factors might lead to a dismissal of the bankruptcy case we're going to click on that one because you do need to know well if the debtor proposes a new plan yeah because you have to propose a new plan so we're going to click on that one but these are things you're going to have to know. So you're going to have to read over it. Look, ladies and gentlemen, this is your research. We're trying to save your stuff. Okay? We're trying to save your stuff. Now watch what I'm doing now because y'all need to pay attention because this is very important for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Watch this. What are some of the common reasons why the original plan for reorganization might not be accepted? We click on that. Why? Because you're going to need to know the obstacles, what might happen first. In other words, you need to be able to overcome these stupidities. They said inadequate disclosures. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid. Disclose everything in bankruptcy. You ain't got to hide nothing. Okay, because watch what I do now. You see all of this stuff where it looks like you ain't got no hope? The plan for reorganization be modified if it is initially rejected? Of course it can. If it's rejected, of course it can. Come on now.
You just have to sit up there and overcome. We shall overcome someday. <clears throat> Excuse me. You just need to overcome the objections. So let's go ahead. We're not going to ask any more of these. Now watch this. Wake up. In my situation, I make roughly $1,000 per month, comma, I am a sole proprietor, comma, yet the estate has several creditors who are claiming that they are due monies, comma, I only have one objection. Comma, I need to see proof of their claims. Period. The law requires the creditor to show proof of funding or proof of actually lending consideration and or value. Comma, can you provide me three case citations which document that I have the right to access this information? Comma, it would greatly help in my research in this area. Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, the creditor has no standing unless they can prove that they actually did something, gave you something of value. That's where value and consideration comes in. So here are the cases. Now, what you must do, here it is. The case discusses the disallowance of a creditor's claim due to the failure to attach supporting documentation. The court held that the Federal Rules of Bankruptcy Procedure cannot modify substantive rights and that the exclusion grounds for disallowance of a claim are provided in Section 502. So let's click on Section 502. That's why I use the web-based one because it comes with links. Here is the case from casetext.com. And all you got to do is go over the sections of the case that applies to that situation where they have to provide proof of claim. Okay, pay attention. The court sustained the objection of Michael Chaplin, trustee, whose only objection to the claim was that it failed to meet the requirements of Federal Rules of Bankruptcy Procedure because the claimant had not attached any supporting documentation. Provides for the exclusion grounds of disallowance claim that the rules may not modify substantive rights, we reverse. Yes, they reversed it back to the court because they agreed with the trustee that they didn't provide supporting evidence. Now, guess what? Guess what's not evident <laughs> in federal rules of civil procedure, which the bankruptcy court rules follow? Copies. Now, remember, the creditors never put the original on the record. They only put a copy. You have to challenge that copy you'll have to challenge that that is not the original that is not the document that i signed and they have not asked for leave of this court and because prior to this day they had not put in a notice of lost note which i would have challenged either way because that means the note does not exist and the copy mm -mm, i didn't sign that go ahead give me a bible I will attest under the record that I did not sign that document. That is not my original signature. So I did not sign that document. You didn't sign the copy. Somebody else signed the copy. A computer-generated copy is not an original. You did not sign that copy, so you can attest that I did not sign that document. And you cannot bring anybody here on the record who can prove that I did. I dare you. You didn't sign that document. Oh, no, they get literal with you. You get just as literal with them. Some of you, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, that means this is way over your head and you shouldn't be doing this. I joke with you not. Let's go back to finishing up talking about the law. Let me get rid of that page. Eventually, I'll read that case, but not right now. Okay, so we got that taken care of. Can you provide information, specific grounds for disallowance of a creditor's claim? Okay, so they're going to provide additional cases for disallowance of the creditor's claims. See, that's the first thing you want to do is you want to challenge their claims. Anybody coming in as a creditor, show me proof I owe you money. Now, watch this. I love that. Unenforceable against the debtor because it's not secured. The loan is not secured. The promissory note secured the loan. 
they have the security interest. They're holding on to the promissory note. You guys under, need to understand that. The promissory note is the security and the collateral for the loan. That's their security interest. They already have it. They documented on the record that they have it. So what claim do they have? They don't have an interest in my property. No, they can't have two interests. They can't have two collaterals. It's called dual collateralization. I haven't given them authorization to sit up there and charge me twice. So no, they don't have my permission. I don't consent to that bull crap. And you can't show me a single contract where I consented that they could have dual collateralization. Okay? That's it. Now, what are there any specific requirements of creditors that the creditors claim must meet in order to be allowed in a bankruptcy court? We're going to click on that one. Y'all got a lot of reading to do, but we're doing this for you. We're not doing this for me. Okay? We are doing this for you. We are not doing this for me. So let's continue, shall we? Oh, it, it, it wants to be continuing on. Well, you go ahead and continue on. We can go to the next thing. Wake up. One of the creditors is a bank, comma, and my claim that the creditor doesn't have a claim is because, comma, based upon my depositing of my promissory note, comma, which operates as collateral and security for the loan, comma, that the bank already has its security interest in the promissory note as the possessor of the note, which operated as collateral which the courts have already determined can be used as payment for an outstanding debt, period. And because they've already received payment and they got to fractional reserve at 100% that payment due to the moratorium imposed by the Board of Governors for the Federal Reserve, comma, that ended March 11th, 2024, that they are owed nothing in return because they made a gain that is defined in law as a capital gain, which concerned my interests, of which I was not compensated, and by law there must be an offset. Exclamation mark. Can you show me three case citations that support this conclusion? Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll have to go back and listen to what I just wrote. And I know that it was going to say that before it did it because I asked it for case citation because what I just said goes against their programming. But that's the fact. They got to a fractional reserve. The promissory note operates as, uh-uh, nope, 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 nope. I'm afraid I can't find specific cases. I don't want to see. I'm afraid. Okay. Don't want to see that at all. Uh-uh. When a debtor provides a promissory note collateral for a loan, the creditor, in this case, let me, you see how they say in this case? because they're trying to be very specific. So I will, I'll provide you with some general information regarding the concept of offsetting a bet claim with a debtor's promissory note used as collateral. Please keep in mind that this information is not legal advice in general. An offset of is a legal right. Nobody asked you for an offset. I, I want case law. I don't want no general conversation. So let's see if it's gonna give me some cases. Yeah, you see how it's hesitating? See, now it's explaining things. I didn't ask it to explain to me that. I asked for case citations. So hold on. TikTok. I mean, not TikTok, because, you know, they don't want TikTok on anywhere in our vicinity. You know, YouTube hates TikTok. Everybody hates TikTok. Tick, 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 TikTok. Anyway, one second. Can you explain this concept of fractional reserve banking and how it relates to the bank's claim, what fraction, uh, what factors determine whether the bank's claim can be offset by a promissory note? Let's do that one. We're not going to go into too much detail about it. I will do that in about a week and a half or so. So for right now, we're going to give you guys just the information 
uh, the promissory note must be legally binding agreement between the borrower if a certain essentials, repayment terms, the signature of the parties involved, the note should comply, blah, blah, prior to the promissory, priority of the promissory note if there are multiple creditors. No, that's not, that's not the answer to that question that was just asked. That was not the answer. I don't know why it's playing with me. So we're going to take the question that I asked right here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to chat GPT it because that's what we got to do. We got to chat GPT. So come on now. Hit the right part of the mouse. Turn that keyboard a little bit so you focusing on the mouse and not looking down. Sorry, I used to use a certain keyboard all the time and my hands are, you know, that 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 memory thing. So give me one second while we ask chat GPT. Uh, certainly, here are three case citations that support your conclusion. In this case, the court addressed the issue of whether a creditor's holding a promissory note as collateral could be considered to have received payment through the possession of the note. The court held that the creditor's possession of the note constituted satisfaction of the debt, barring the creditor from seeking repayment. Dude! Okay, so hold on. I know, I know, I know, but we can't talk about it right now. This is this is information for those of you who get exactly what was being said just a second ago. I don't even know if I copied it. <laughs> I just was talking, and let's see. Give me one second. Yeah, there you go. Let's see if it's accurate, because that's why we go to Perplexity and Poe. Uh, the court held that the creditor's possession of the promissory note as collateral constituted satisfaction of the debt, barring the creditor from seeking further payment of the debt. Like I said, we're going to talk about this in the future. What is the security interest in bankruptcy law? In a secured note, an unsecured note, no. I want to do the one as what is the value of the interest of that one, but this one... Search result that points out that the security interest is the security interest in personal property fixtures, blah, 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 but the security interest is in the note. The promissory note is the collateral and security. Go back and look at Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, Subsections 2 and 4. 2 specifically says that the tender is the note or the bill of exchange and that it operates as collateral and security. How does security interest affect the creditor's rights in bankruptcy? Well, because they have the collateral and security, they have no rights to come in as a creditor in bankruptcy. So, ladies and gentlemen, I can't go any further with this because I can only give you enough information. If I keep talking, many of you are going to get glassy-eyed, as at least 50% of you already got glassy-eyed. Don't tell me that it hasn't happened. I know my audience. You see, when I do the longer videos where I'm explaining things in more detail, people tune out. So I've been doing the shorter videos and everybody's been tuning in. Again, know thy audience. So got to go. We'll talk. have another video coming up shortly. But go over the bankruptcy information. You're going to get each one of these links. Okay, we're going to do the short and link thing. You're going to get each one of these links in the description. So go over each, including the one about the bankruptcy. All right. This is going to be entitled Bankruptcy 11 Update. Well, Bankruptcy Chapter 11 Update. Got to go.